On behalf of Cardiovascular Research On Life, within our series leaders in cardiovascular research, we have an honor to welcome today Professor Jerome Bax, the past president of European Cardiac Society uh, and currently a professor of cardiology at Leiden University. Uh, professor Bax uh, has led the European Cardiac Society through a very, very uh, good period of development uh, of the society. And we are very happy to have you here today with us. Thank you. Thank you, my pleasure. Uh, uh, Professor Bax, uh, what do you think is the secret of success in science? Is it ambition or is it talent? I think it's a little bit of both. But what I think is the secret of success is what you see in every achievement and predominantly sports. If you look at sports, what is the secret of success? 10,000 hour rule. That yeah. is the secret of success. Nothing fancy, nothing talent or whatever. 10,000 hour rule. The more time you put in something, the more successful you become. If you want to achieve something, you work 10,000 hours. I agree and uh, it's, it's looking at the history, it's hard to uh, 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 find any other better uh, response to that. And if you think about your own work and uh, your own scientific uh, journey, what would you consider your greatest uh, achievement uh, so far? Uh, you've done a lot of things, both uh, on the level of developing society and uh, developing, sci developing your own research. What do you think is the really the achievement? Mm, I, I think one cannot pick out one thing that is an achievement. I think I enjoyed, I was privileged that I came in a place where there was all these different clinical possibilities. Uh, I worked in electrophysiology for one year, I worked in invasive for one year, and then I went to imaging and then I brought it together, the clinics and the imaging. And uh, bringing all this imaging together, the CT scan, the echo, the nuclear scan, the MRI, but really using it to look at clinical dilemmas and how imaging can help you understand it and better solve it or treat it. I think that's where we made as a team some achievements and I'm proud of that. And you are a very achieved clinical uh, scientist, but you know, cardiovascular research is mainly basic science and translational. And for us, it's always a very important question. Uh, what basic science can bring to society? Whether we can compete in public eyes with the clinical research. What for a clinical researcher does basic science uh, finding mean? Okay, another thing that I, I always teach the young physicians that I work with and the young researchers is that I don't think so much as in to compete. I think competition you do only with yourself. If you want to achieve more, you do more. If you want to, are you okay as you do, then you do like you do. Um, but coming back to the topic of basic science versus um, clinical science, for me there's also no competition there. These two cannot do without each other. Every problem that we see has to go through a period of basic evaluations, basic understanding. And when we have that, we can take it to the clinical level. Um, here at the HA 2018 in Chicago, one of the success stories comes from a friend of mine, Sam Tsimikas from San Diego. He speaks about LP Little A. I remember him. He took the entire journey, starting with basic science and now brings it to a phase two clinical trial. That's how it should be. And that's how these two should work together, um, the clinics and the basic science. If we can now talk a little bit about uh, European Cardiac Society, because uh, under your leadership, European Cardiac Society has grown. And in fact, I can say this without uh, uh, any hesitation, has become probably the strongest uh, cardiovascular society in the world. How, how was it achieved? What is the secret of that? Okay, again, I'm a little bit more modest at some of these things because these things are like pendulums. Sometimes they're all the way here and sometimes they're all the way there. And uh, what you see, for example, so many years ago, AHA was the leading society. This Congress, there were 30,000 people. And um, if you could present an abstract here, you were an absolute leader. You were thrilled if you got an abstract excited, uh, accepted here. You were really excited. I think... Um, Nowadays, the things have changed a little bit. That has to do with a lot of factors that we as physicians don't completely control. One of the things that we do control is when you reach out to people. What I did a lot during my presidency is I went to these countries. I met with the people and I brought the enthusiasm that we have to them. And when you go there and you bring the enthusiasm, they reply and they came back. 
And so if we look at the people attending now, a lot of them come from the farther away countries, from China, from Japan, from South America, from Africa, from Canada, Australia. We invested a lot and that pays back. Yes. And so they come. If you're enthusiastic, then I get enthusiastic as well. And I think that is one of the keys to this success. Working with people is meeting with people, sharing with people. And if you approach it that way, then you see actually that your society is doing quite well. And then even though it's a very hard work, you can probably enjoy it as well. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Always when I go somewhere, meet with the people. And what I see also is that throughout the entire world, we're not so very different. The problems that you have in your country, I have in my country, the medical issues that are, let's say in Australia, an issue are also in Canada and to some extent are the same in Africa. Of course, some countries have different problems, but in general, we all struggle with the same things. And that's what brings us together, makes us one, unites us. And uh, which of the developments in European Cardiac Society under your presidency you would consider the main success, something that you are really proud of? I think we did quite well with the meeting. Normally yes. in Munich we have 26,000 and now we had 33,000. And of course you can be lucky, but this is not purely luck. This is reflecting the very good uh, collaboration between the different physicians from the different parts of the world, but also us reaching out to them, bringing them to us. And what is important, and that was one of the, well, actually Dr. Brownwald gave the keynote at the opening ceremony, how we work together, industry and physicians, cardiologists. And that is the one chain that we should never break because we cannot do without each other. He showed in his talk, he explained that there were five Nobel Prizes in the business of lipids. And only when industries start to collaborate with the physicians, it took off like this. But before that, nothing happened. So I think what is key in the more difficult times as we are now, that we should not shy away from each other, but rather we should work together. Physicians and industry, industry and physicians. That's very important, that we never lose sight of that. Because all the innovations that we're talking about, the basic things, the translational, the innovations, bringing it to the patients, that only works because we work together. The full translation is the full journey to guidelines, uh, in fact. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And, uh, it requires cooperation of many uh, uh, elements. And Fully indeed, agree. Yeah. And uh, if we think, you've just mentioned, uh, Congress is so large, the society is really uh, viewed as the main society of cardiology worldwide. Can it grow further? Which areas you would identify mm. as, as potential, uh, have still potential for growth? I mean, uh, this is difficult. I, I think one should not always look at more, but if you ask for where can we do more, I think reaching out to the next generation. We started doing that more, and the next generation thinks differently than we do, acts differently than we do. They get confronted with different problems than we do. The burnout, major problem, hitting significantly the younger generation. So I think if we engage this younger generation, maybe we can do better, but for sure, we ensure continuity, bringing them to us. And in development of organizations uh, such as ESC, do you believe uh, more in a rapid change uh, or in gradual? Uh, 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 <laughs> you, you saw the opening lecture that I did, that I showed I this did? ship. Yes. And I believe that if you're the captain on a big ship, you can steer one degree and that is good enough to change the direction. If you steer more than one degree, your ship is going to capsize. So I think in the continuity of action, you do little subtle changes. If you do too much, you're going to result in problems. However, sometimes, sometimes there is issues where you need to aggressively change directions. And these are the acute moments. We didn't encounter any of that, fortunately. So we could go little changes and that's what we did. And the end result is that we strengthened and significantly consolidated what we have, bringing and this to a very strong society. Thank you very much, Jerome, for uh, this interesting conversation. And uh, thank you to our readers. And we encourage you to uh, follow us on uh, Cardiovascular Research Online. Thank you. Thank you much.